Grover from Upscale Audio here, and today we're going to be talking about the DCA Expanse headphone. For those who aren't familiar, DCA stands for Dan Clark Audio, previously known some years ago as Mr. Speaker's headphones. Now, this is their newest flagship headphone from the planar magnetic side. They have the voce on the electro electrostatic side. Um, but the Expanse is essentially the open back version of the Stealth. Now, I say open back version of the Stealth, but there are some key differences. So let's go over what some of those basic technologies that Dan Clark Audio uses are in the Expanse. That would be the acoustic meta material. So they've got a special material in here, which also functions as a baffle and a waveguide. Um, and that is a new proprietary Dan Clark invention. Um, I believe they do use it in the Stealth as well, um, but here it is present in the Expanse. They have a new grill design, which was generated using generative design. For those who are familiar, it's a type of organic design language. And you can see it in the grills. It's quite um, sort of or organic or, or um, almost biological looking. They also have a number of other improvements. So things like their V-planar diaphragm and a lot of their motor and magnet structure improvements, all that sort of stuff. All the stuff you've come to expect from Dan Clark Audio. The entire chassis is made out of magnesium. It's very lightweight. The headphones actually fold up into themselves, and the carrying case is quite compact and small. It comes with one of their upgraded cables as well. Again, these are things that will be familiar to Stealth owners. Now, let's talk a little bit about what's different in the Expanse from the Stealth. The Stealth obviously had an extremely flat frequency response if you're using something akin to the Harman Target Curve or, or the Sean Olive Curve, uh, Olive Welty Curve. These follow that trend, much like the Stealth. They have a little bit of extra bass in the lower mid upper bass region, and Dan has explained that the reason for this is to get a little bit more perceptual punch in there. So that region, you may not necessarily hear it so much as sort of an elevation, but you may hear it as a little bit of extra weight in the low end. Now, these headphones to me are very, very neutral, but in a positive way. They're not sterile, they're not dry, they're not clinical. Some people found that the Stealth really needed quite a heavy duty amplifier to sort of get them to dynamically wake up. Now, what I will say is, interestingly enough, while the Stealth had a very wide head stage, these perhaps don't have quite as wide of a head stage, but they do have a really nice sense of dynamic impact. So, in a sense, it's a little backwards from what you'd expect. The Stealth really offers a wide open head stage and a nice smooth flat frequency response. The Expanse offers a similar smooth flat frequency response, but with a little extra weight in the lower regions, and also a sense of dynamic impact and snap that to me is second to only perhaps the Focal Utopia, which is like really super, super dynamic headphone. This is one of my personal favorite headphones, and actually this is the headphone I use the most as a daily driver in my system. I pair it with a Ferrum Hypsos NOR, and I find the sound to be absolutely incredible. Now, I do use it a lot for studio work when I'm mixing or mastering, so that flattish fr frequency response really does appeal to me. Though I will say, people who are uh, more likely to enjoy sort of a warm to neutral sounding headphone will probably enjoy this. People who are looking for something that's really got a lot more top end energy, this I would say is not necessarily an incredibly bright headphone. So that's kind of you know something to know um, if you're looking for a headphone that has more top end energy. I generally don't think headphones with too much treble energy are preferable for anyone, but to each their own. So let's talk a little bit about amplification. As I mentioned, I use a Ferrum stack for this, and that has a pretty significant amount of output. What I can also recommend is something like the path a Pathos Inpole. Um, that's a really powerful combination that will really drive these ex exceptionally well. Something to know about these from a power standpoint is that they are going to be more in that high fi man Sosfara type of category or that Abyss 1266. These like a fair amount of juice. You can use them with less, they will run on a variety of things, but in general I find that they do like a fairly substantial output and they do like an amplifier which is capable of a fair degree of current. Now amplifiers that I think also work well with them would be things like the Hugo TT2, um, as mentioned the Pathos Inpole. Some of the larger Prima Luna headphone out outputs might drive this headphone as well. Something like a Felix Envy would be a fantastic match with these. That would be a very linear, very open, very rich layered sound. But overall, as I mentioned, you do want something that's probably going to have at least four to six plus watts into their impedance load. You're going to want to have something that can drive somewhat lower impedance load, and you're going to want to have something that really has a sense of dynamics and punch to it. Overall, this is one of my favorite headphones, both at the price and just in general. As I mentioned, it's my personal headphone that I use as a daily driver most of the time. It's a really fantastic sounding headphone. It just hits so many of those boxes that I think of as a headphone user wanting to have
hit, right? The usability, I can take them kind of on the go, I can run them off of anything, but they're really rewarding with better amplification. And the form factor and the comfort is incredible. I mean, those of you who know Dan Clark Audio know that they do really, really wonderful industrial design. And this one is no different. The ear pads are really soft. They kind of mold to your jawline in a certain way. The light weight from the magnesium chassis makes these a really comfortable and light headphone to wear. The headband works really well. It's flexible and it also stays on your head quite, quite well. So overall, for me, two thumbs up. This is perhaps my favorite headphone on the market at the moment uh, if I'm looking at flagship headphones. Check out more at upscaleaudio.com if you need to know more about the Dan Clark Audio Expanse.